Is not my word like as fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, He saith. Now, I'm not saying that everyone that teaches this doctrine is doing it on purpose. Most people, and I think, are probably doing it by accident, but... It is a doctrine of demons. This isn't a small issue on whether instruments should be allowed in church or not, or whether you should pray with your hat on or not. This is something that is damning. Imagine being told that you're not saved, born again, filled with the Holy Spirit because you didn't speak in tongues when you got filled. That is demonic as it can get. Now we're going to destroy, we're going to smush this doctrine of demons. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, with his word, John 1 1 says that he is the word. We've got God on our side. For he whom God has sent utters the words of God, for he gives the Spirit without measure. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. The Son was given the Spirit without measure. Jesus Christ was. And he didn't even speak in tongues. He healed the sick, cast out demons in his name, prophesied. Wow. He didn't even speak in tongues. And he was given the spirit without measure. Which means that we're given the spirit with measure. We don't have as much power as Jesus did. Jesus Christ was filled with the Spirit without measure 24-7. And he did everything, including turning away from temptation when he fasted for 40 days in the desert. Some of these people are so obsessed and idolize tongues so much when it isn't even written that Jesus Christ himself spoke in tongues. If tongues is so important and has to do with salvation, Jesus Christ would have had it written in his word showing that he did it because he came to live as an example as to how we should live our lives. He did everything. He did everything except speak in tongues as it is written, guys. Don't get me wrong. Tongues is great. I myself speak in tongues, so it's not like I'm over here doing this because I'm jealous that there's others speaking in tongues and I'm not. This is coming from someone that has the gift of tongues. It's a gift. It's an addition. That's why it's called a gift. Goodness gracious. In fact, Paul writes that he'd rather us seek other gifts. A lot of you people need to read 1 Corinthians 14. All you people that are just obsessed with tongues and calling people out saying, oh, you're not saved, you're not filled, because he didn't speak with tongues. It's time for you to read 1 Corinthians 14. Tongues is great. It's for self-edification and also for speaking to others in a different language. That's why That's why God gave them that gift. It wasn't some one-time thing. They, give, they gave it the day upon Pentecost, so that they could go to preach to the Jews, the Gentiles. And then God gave it to them as well to show them that they could receive the same spirit and have access to the same gifts. It's not that complicated, guys. Look at this. Acts only has tongues written in it five different times. 
Acts only shows three instances of people getting saved than speaking in tongues. Throughout Acts, it shows thousands of people getting baptized by the Holy Spirit, and there is no indication of them speaking in tongues. Acts 2.41 Acts 8.5-25 Acts 16.31-34 Acts 21.20 Acts and 1 Corinthians are the only books that talk about tongues. 1 Corinthians only talks about it as a gift. So if Acts is the only book in the Bible where it shows both tongues and the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I would think that God would have indicated that every one of them spoke in tongues if tongues is the evidence. Jesus does talk about tongues once in Mark 16:17 says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Now, this does not mean that every, spe every person that gets saved is going to end up speaking in tongues. This is, first of all, this is a prophecy for the events that are going to come in Acts. And also it's a prophecy for some people that do get baptized by the Holy Spirit and receive the gift of tongues right then and there. But it doesn't mean that everyone will end up speaking in tongues once they're baptized by the Holy Spirit. Just like in this verse it says, they will cast out devils. It doesn't mean that everyone that gets baptized by the Holy Spirit is going to cast out devils. So there you go, guys. It's also talking about those that get born again, filled with the Spirit, then later on they receive the gift. You don't always receive the gifts right as you're born again, guys. you got to seek them on your journey. That's why Paul talks about in Corinthians, seeking them, seeking other gifts besides tongues as well. Tongues is not the only gift. Hate to break it to you guys. Mark 16, 15 through 18. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any, any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover." Does every believer end up casting out devils? Nope. Does every believer end up speaking in tongues? Nope. Read 1 Corinthians 14. Does every believer take up a serpent? Nope. Does every believer end up drinking a deadly thing and it not hurting them? Nope. Does every believer end up laying hands on the sick and uh, getting them to recover? In the name of Jesus Christ? Nope. Just like how Jesus prophesied there'd be people healing the sick and casting out demons, he prophesied that there'd be some people that would end up speaking in tongues and casting out devils. So, there's a good majority of Christians that do end up doing at least one of these things. How much more narrow would it be to say that all believers will end up doing one of these things, which is speaking in tongues? If you're requiring that all speak in tongues at least once, then why not the rest on this list? Man, is that narrow and unbiblical. Demonic. Here are servants of Jesus Christ getting filled with the Holy Spirit and not speaking in tongues. Luke 1, 41 through 42 And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard... The salutation of Mary, the babe, leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost, and she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Luke 1, 67 through 69. And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. For he hath visited, visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. 
All right, you need another scripture? Here's one in the book of Acts. Acts 9, 15 through 20. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will shew him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forwith and arose and was baptized. And when he had received me, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ the synagogues in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. Do you guys even know who Saul is? Do you know who Saul is? I'm asking you right now. Saul is Paul. Paul wrote a lot, most of the New Testament. He wrote a lot, guys. And the only time he spoke about tongues was in 1 Corinthians. And when he got baptized by the Holy Spirit, woo, he didn't start speaking in tongues. Let's just recap some. 1 Corinthians is the only time that Paul talks about tongues. And there he says, not everyone will speak in tongues. Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? 1 Corinthians 12.30 we don't see Paul checking up on the churches in his letters to make sure they're speaking in tongues when they get saved. Paul was literally writing these letters during the book of Acts, during those events. If tongues had to do with salvation, then he would have been writing about it. The one time he wrote about it, he said it was a gift and that not everyone would speak it. After 1 Corinthians 12, the chapter where it says not everyone will speak in tongues... In chapter 14, it says, God is not a God of confusion. So it'd be pretty confusing if everyone spoke in tongues. Jesus says that the fruit of the Spirit is the evidence. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Matthew 7, 20. It doesn't say, ye shall know them by their tongues. It's pretty interesting that right after Jesus says that, he says, Wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Matthew seven twenty through 23. Those that have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This is Galatians 3, 2 through 3. This only would I learn of you, received ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Are ye so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? What if someone didn't have a tongue? Could they get saved? Not according to this doctrine of demons, but according to the Word of God, God himself? Yes, you can. Hallelujah. Here's just a little bit of my testimony. I burnt all my stuff, all my video games, all my books that weren't godly. And um, I also preached on a plane way before I even spoke in tongues. I was born again in 2018, and I received the Holy Spirit in 2018 when I was born again. It happens at the same time, guys. I received the gift of tongues two years later in 2020. And it wasn't some one-time thing. 
I receive the gift of tongues, hallelujah. If the speaking in tongues once crap was a thing, then why is there churches filled with people that all continue to speak in tongues? I thought the Bible said not everyone will speak in tongues and that we're all different parts to the body of Christ. So not only do we have people that believe in the speaking in tongues at least once foolishness, but we also have churches where the majority are faking it. Also, why are all these pastors out here speaking in the mic without someone who has the gift of interpretation? No wonder there's Baptists and others that don't believe in the gifts because we got all these false users and false teachings on the gifts. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are alive and well, just like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, because they're a part of Him. Don't you see it? The whole word makes up God, guys. He's not dead. He died and rose again. So, in order to get people to believe the full Bible, you got to stop taking it as a joke. You got to obey it. You got to be a doer of the word, obey it, and use the gifts correctly and teach them correctly as well.